Okay, now that we know the subsets of real numbers, let's go ahead and learn some of the properties of real numbers. So first property, closure property. All closure property is saying is that if I have a real number and I add a real number to it, I'm gonna end up with a real number. Same if I have a real number and I multiply a real number to it, I'm gonna end up with a real number. So that is closure property of addition and closure property of multiplication. We wanna be sure to say the whole name when we're naming properties. And next, we're gonna talk about identity and inverse. These are just thinkers, so let's see if you can get it. The identity property of addition, a plus what equals a. Notice that you get back the same thing. That's the identity property. A plus y equals a. Zero. A plus zero equals a. Identity property of addition. What about multiplication? A times what equals a. One. A times one equals a. Identity property of multiplication. Be sure and say the whole thing. So now let's talk about inverse. Inverse is undo. So we want to undo with addition and undo with multiplication. Inverse property of addition. A plus what equals zero, because I'm trying to undo it this time. A plus its opposite equals zero. So A plus negative A equals zero. Inverse property of addition. Now what about inverse property of multiplication? A times what equals one. A times its reciprocal equals one. So A times one over A equals one, because the A's will divide out. Next, we're going to talk about commutative property and associative property. So commutative property of addition. So I'm A, I'm B. Okay, A plus B equals. Commutative property says that just because you switch the order when you're adding doesn't mean you change the equality. And commutative property, we can think about commuting. So let's go on a drive, Miss Ryan. I'm B, I'm A. So B plus A equals a, a plus, plus B. B, commutative property of addition. Would this work for multiplication? Let's see. I'm A times I'm B. A times B equals, should we go on a drive? <laughs> B times A. A times B equals B times A. And how do I know which property? Because we commuted. So commutative property of addition and commutative property of multiplication. Does it work for the other operations? A minus B equals B minus A. Let's try with numbers. Um, two minus one equals one. One minus two also equals one. No, that's negative one. These are not the same. So They're, it doesn't work. No. Mm -mm. So only for addition and multiplication. Yep. Now let's talk about associative property of addition. We needed a little friend for this one. So we're gonna go ahead and change our variables. Miss Ryan is going to be R. And we have our beautiful guest star, Sophie who is S and I'll be T. So this time, let's demonstrate the associative property of addition. R plus S plus T. But right now, where's the association? Those two, R and S are associated, meaning you would add those first and then add T. With associative property of addition, it says that we can change the association and it's still equal. The key here is the order doesn't change. So it's always gonna go R plus S plus T. The association just moves. So let's do it. So now we have R plus S plus T, but the association changed. Now, S plus T is, is associated. associated. Associative property of addition. Let's try multiplication. Associative property of multiplication. So R times S times T. But once again, where's the association? R times S first, then times T. Will it matter? Is it still equal if we change the association? Let's look. Remember, the order didn't change. We still have R times S times T, R times S times T, but where's the association? S times T. So we'll multiply S times T first, and then multiply by R. And we know those are equivalent, so that is the associative property of multiplication. All right, we've already learned all of the properties of addition and the multiplication. Let's review one that you knew since Algebra 1. Here we have S Turn. times T plus R. What are we going to do? We're going to distribute Sophie. It's always nice to share. Here we go. S times T plus S times R. That's a good distributive property. Always nice to share. Share Sophie. I have an idea. I have a little test. Let's give this a try.
Using the properties of real numbers we just went over, pause and give this a try. See if you can identify what property is being demonstrated in each of these examples for number four. Let's check your work. So looking at the first one, the only thing that changed from the left side of the equal sign to the right side of the equal sign is the parentheses, the association. The order of the letters are still the same, so this has to be associative property of addition. As we look at the next one, we can see that two-fifths is being multiplied by its reciprocal. So it's being multiplied by something that's undoing it. So two-fifths times five halves equals one. So this has to be the inverse property of multiplication. Okay, pay attention here. C is the tricky one. As I look from left to right, the big thing that I notice are those parentheses around negative 10. But sometimes those can be there to fool you. You need to ask yourself what really changed from left to right. Look at that, I see negative 10 plus four and then four plus negative 10. So it's actually the order that's changing. And when the order changes, we know it's commutative. So commutative property of addition here. Be really, really careful. Just because you see parentheses doesn't make something automatically associated. And this one's a quick one because it's gotta be the identity property of multiplication. Because we start with Q, we end with Q, Q times one equals Q. Okay, have you tried E yet? This one can be tricky might be tempting to think associative here because the parentheses, but that's not the part that's changed. The R has changed from the front to the back. So it's commutative property, but of what? Well, the R is not being added, it's being multiplied. So commutative property of multiplication. Let's review. So the subsets of real numbers, know when it's rational, fractional, or irrational, not fractional, N-W-I-R-I. So those are subsets of real numbers. And then next, let's do our properties. Of course we have closure, and then we have identity. Remember identity was just, how do I get myself? So identity of addition, a plus zero equals a. Identity of multiplication, a times one equals a. Then we have inverse property of addition and multiplication. Inverse undoes. So what do I need to add to a to end with zero? What do I need to multiply to a to end with one? And then we went into commutative. And remember, commutative, we're moving. Order changes. And then we have associative. Associative is just the association changes. Not Remember, the not every time that you have parentheses does that mean it's associative property, right? You have to look at what changed. Mm -hmm. And finally, distributive property, which is a review from Algebra 1.